fight. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Polynerdic Pro Wrestling. We're calling this one Polynerdic Pro Wrestling Assault on April 13. If you like 70s action movies or their early 2000s remakes, you understand the joke I just made. Starting things off with an eight man battle royale. Kenny Omega and Walter, the previous two Pioneer Pro Wrestling World Champs, Kofi Kingston, PCO, Matt Taven, Daniel Bryan, Drew McIntyre, and Shinsuke Nakamura. Winner of this match will go on to be in the main event of this show against newly crowned PNPW World Champ Pete Dunne. Uh, Kenny Omega and Walter in it are in it by virtue of. Um, being the last two champs and having not been given rematches. We don't do the automatic rematch thing around here because uh, that would get dull if two guys just traded the ball back and forth. I think very well could happen in this game. This is another uh, regular show. This is about a tournament show. So that means we have 12 matches. All of them except this one for titles. Difficulty set to 10, so the AI should be sharp, and the speed set to 125, so that the matches move pretty fluidly. <laughs> Frankly, PCO's in here just for my own amusement after watching him at uh, the G1 Supercard. Dude's nuts. Kofi's in here for obvious reasons. Daniel Bryan's in here for obvious reasons. Matt Taven's in here because he's the current Ring of Honor world champ in real life. I don't think I need to explain further why uh, Wyatt, or Wyatt Walter and Kenny Omega are in here. Got a pretty good show lined up though. If the uh, matches end up being as good as they potentially could and they're not all squashes. Nice counter by Kofi there. McIntyre stomping right off Walter's head in the face. Later on in the card, we'll see if uh, Yo Shirai can get her 10th title defense in. Is Kylie Ray. Tomohiro yeah. Ishii and Samoa Joe are going to tangle over the uh, Intercontinental title. Okada versus Finn Balor for the TV title. This is a, this is a, a pretty pretty well put together show in my opinion, but uh, of course I'm biased. This is how we're kicking off our, our weekend of streaming. We're going to stream most of today. For at least the you know, six and a half hours today, if I can, if I can uh, pull it off. Start with this show. This will take up about an hour or two of the time, depending on how these matches go. Drew McIntyre and Tito Omega doing the golden trigger. PCO. Man's probably unfazed. I'm not sure what happened in the, in the midst of all that humanity just now. PCO missing the moonsault. Dropkick into nothing. As I said, uh, Omega and Walter 
Walter was the inaugural PNPW World Champ. Dropped it in his first defense to Kenny Omega. Oh no! Coffee gonna be done? Nope, Shinsuke broke it up. Um, Walter dropped it immediately to Omega, who dropped it immediately to Pete Dunne. So. Walter almost been Kenny. A lot of a lot of moving parts here that's hard to follow what's happening. Got PCO and Taven stacked in the corner there for a second. Taven eating the J driller. Matt Taven's out. Kitty Omega. Eliminates Matt Taven with a J-Driller, followed by a standing shooting star press. Shinsuke pins Walter. I didn't see what Shinsuke hit Walter with, but took him out. The yes, taunt, coupled with the dick punch. PCO just critical Shinsuke with the moonsault. So Shinsuke is gonna lay there like a corpse for the rest of the match. It's been a while since we've seen that in a multi-man match. At least some of PCO ends up being the challenger. He done versus PCO. That be a match. Mega dropping Daniel Bryan on his head. Won't get to follow through though. Daniel Bryan's out. Good taunt, Kofi. It's right in front of you. Cracks me up that even on the highest difficulty, the the, uh, the AI still does the thing where they run into each other. Right, Kofi's going to take two knees. They so just run into each other. If that's what takes Kenny Omega out, that'd be hilarious. At least they're being kind and they're staying away from Shinsuke. You know, they, they move the action out away from where Shinsuke's way. <laughs> Captain Smile Driver. Kenny might be done. Yeah, he's done. PCO eliminates Kenny. He has a beast. I have like trouble in paradise there. But 
Drew no sells it. PCO's out, so it's down to Drew and Kofi. Oh, this is just gonna be Drew. Drew McIntyre goes on to face Pete Dunne in today's main event. Fantastic. I was pulling for Kofi there. Not a bad run there. Not a bad run. All right, next match. It's also a multi-man match, but not a battle royale. Complete all injuries. Junior heavyweight champion, Taiji Ishimori. He's gonna take on Cedric Alexander. Put him in the blue. I like him in the blue. Akira Tozawa. And looking for a legend. Dean Malenko. You know what? This isn't an elimination match. I need to I need to go back a screen. Ah. All right, we're having great great production today. I started off strong by you know leaping into the first match instead of showing you a menu. All right, here we go. Let's do this first win. Make sure the difficulty level is set to the right settings. There we are. And the speed. Here we go. Match number two for the junior heavyweight title will be a uh, four way for, with uh, Cedric Alexander, Kira Tozawa, Dean Malenko, and Taiji Ishimori. Spike Dean on his head there for a second. Give up. Yeah. 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 Huh. I don't watch 205 Live, but I feel like Akira and uh, Cedric have been just kind of lost in the shuffle lately. Pretty shocking seeing uh, Buddy Murphy drop his cruiserweight title at WrestleMania. Yeah. 
<laughs> they just announced on Twitter that Glacier, uh, by, by just, I mean 17 hours ago, announced that Gl <laughs> Glacier is going to be in the all elite wrestling double or nothing battle royale. I need to use Glacier more often. I have him on here. I actually really enjoyed his character, though. Sub Zero, Sub -Zero knockoff, what he was. Going for a, a senton on standing guys and they technically countered it. it just like Drop the IWGP Junior Heavyweight title to Dragon Lee on Supercard 2. If I remember that, but that's, that weekend was so long, there was so much wrestling. It took me two days to get through all of WrestleMania. Yeah, because I, I get up fairly early in the morning, so I couldn't stay up till midnight to finish watching. Completely different style Dean Linko has compared to the other three guys. Like I always, I really loved watching Dean wrestle back in the '90s in WCW and a little bit of ECW I saw. I was gonna say that would have been the perfect finish. For them to all collide like that, and then for him to hit that roll up in the midst of all that.
Turnbuckle to the outside. Backstabber by Ishimori. Immediately taken down by Dean. Mori with a submission victory. Akira taps. Ishimori retains. Good show, guys. Good show. All right, this next one. This next one's something. We're gonna do a run of, a tag matches here. Which means we have to change menus. I wish I had a more sophisticated setup so I could just jump match to match to match for y'all. But we do it live, so that means you get to see all this nonsense. As I change back and forth between match types and whatnot. I wish it would just, you know, I wish it would just save your settings. Because it does get irritating every time you change the menu. You gotta come back and do this. I keep running Zon at least. Alright, so this next match is gonna be for the trios. Currently held by Minoru Suzuki, Zack Sabre Jr., and Shelton Benjamin Jr. Shelton Benjamin Jr. Shelton Benjamin. Um, at least I didn't call him Zack X Saber. Um, and they're gonna go up against a singles singles guy and a tag team. And I thought a fun a, a fun pairing or fun grouping rather would be the team of Alistair Black and. The Acolytes. <laughs> that was weird when he was when he had the blonde hair and was still an acolyte. Alistair Black and the Acolytes against Suzuki Goon for the PNPW Trios titles. Fight. I'm always tempted to turn submissions off during some of these matches because that, that's how Suzuki Yun wins every time is they submit somebody. I guess I just need to pair them off solely with people that are talented submission artists. Or Bradshaw needs to knock somebody the fuck out with his clothes on from hell.
probably some things here to start future planning. I'm sure it goes. So I have a big 32 man tournament, single elimination, not round robin, um, lined up. Just seen a, a tweet first thing this morning ah! from Steve from ah! uh, Garden and Raw ah! saying that ah! Zack Saber Jr. is more intimidating than Jay White. And while I don't necessarily find Jay White Jay White's character to be intimidating, I definitely don't find Zack Saber Jr.'s character to be intimidating. Like his, his ring style is. Yeah. Impressive yet dull, in my opinion. Like I, I can't stand watching his matches. Like I, I like mat-based wrestling to an extent, but not entirely mat-based wrestling, joint manipulation and whatnot. Uh, I think his matches are incredibly boring, and uh, I don't find his character work to be necessarily intimidating. I like when someone can wrestle One, two, like a submission based style but shoot. also has a little um, you know they, they have you know, maybe they're good strikers or there's something about their character I just I, the Zack Sabre Jr. character is really funny. like when he's in a match you know there's just going to be a lot of laying on the ground and him slowly Manipulating an arm or a leg. I just got a random text that says, What's up, buddy? It's Fernando. I don't know any Fernandos. It's a spam fishing thing. This is that thing I told you about. Your leg. Zach's running knee to a seated opponent is a really good strike. But like, like you know, compare and contrast him with Minoru Suzuki. Like, Minoru Suzuki is a scary dude.
don't get me wrong. I'm not ragging on uh, Zack Sabre Jr. Uh, he's a talented wrestler. Uh, very obviously. It just, his, his style just doesn't, doesn't click with me. Thirds of Suzuki Yun ate a double five on there. They got one of their own now. Come on, Bradshaw. Knock somebody out. I like the grouping of Alistair and the Just right? seems to fit. I'll show you who's coming out. Killer Cross. What is that? Oh no, no, it's Itzka. Newly retired. I may have mispronounced his name just now. Suzuki Goon's old monster. Oh, right on the hammer. Do it again. I thought his head hit the hammer. That's a confession. Counter black. Almost. Almost saw a title change. Oh shit, somebody critical critical of an illegal man, so now now uh Suzuki goes down a man. Lenora Suzuki critical by the Dominator from Farouk. He's just going to take a nap in the middle of the ring. And that puts Suzuki good at a disadvantage. Oh, Dragon screwed leg whip off the apron. Crazy crisscross action there. Yeah, I spent all that time expecting the, uh, the clothesline from hell to be a knockout blow. Didn't expect it would be the, the Dominator from Farouk. I forgot about the Dominator from Farouk. There's a clothesline from hell, I guess. What does that look like? Alistair, how did you let Sheldon get in there? This match has gone a very long time. Is he over? Yep. Even with their leader knocked out cold, Suzuki Goon pulls off the victory. That was crazy. That was nuts. Oh, man. That's not what I want. Go up the other one. Suzuki Goon with the defense again. He's hoping Minoru Suzuki is okay. Getting knocked out is no joke. Up next, we're going to do our mixed slash intergender tag titles. Cody and Brandy Rhodes against. Let's see if it works this time. Because we were going to do this match last show. And I couldn't find 
Adam Cole's partner. It's like, I know I have one of her. Where the heck is she? I want this version of Britt Baker. Adam Cole and Britt Baker against Cody and Brandy Rhodes. If you haven't caught on by now, when I do the mixed tag slash intergender tag, I like to try to keep the uh, the teams to be composed of real life couples. So here we go. Watching Adam Cole and Cody Rhodes wrestle, right? they seem like they would have a hell of a good time. Or be a hell of a good show, I should say. In fact, I'm going to look and see if that's ever happened. I don't think it has. I think I don't think they had enough. I don't think they had crossover time. I think Adam Cole had signed. Oh, no, it did happen. It happened in 2017. And they were a tag team at one point, too. the word intergender would fit when I made this title. It drives me nuts that I have to call it a mixed tag when it's plainly intergender. Yep. May 27th, 2017 is when this video was posted. It's only 40 seconds of, looks like the finish, but... Oh, wow! Great Baker just slamming Cody down on the apron. Totally not an advertisement, but if you uh, like the uh, like a good blue, uh, blue raspberry slushy kind of 
kind of thing, icy if you will. Um, the Mountain Dew Game Fuel, the blue one, tastes just like it. Uh, I've recently tried the Game Fuels for the first time. They're really, really good. I, I can't speak to their, you know, their advertised ability to like make you shoot better and whatnot and all that stuff with the, with the vitamins and shit that are in them. But like they're like fucking half the calories of a Mountain Dew. Yeah, they, they 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 advertise on the can alertness, accuracy, vitamins A and B. I I can't necessarily say that to make it any more alert than any other soda will with the caffeine. But it's fucking delicious, and it's got a a can you can close. Uh, my only problem with the whole setup is is they they kind of explode under pressure when you open them, and so you almost always end up with a handful of soda that you gotta wash off. Break. Nice move, Adam. Well, say, Brandy, you gotta come in and brush your thin? Of course, Adam Cole and Johnny Gargano had a hell of a two out of three falls match at uh, TakeOver last week. I unfortunately missed most of it because I was uh, dealing with my children at the time and, uh, you know, family stuff. And it uh, led to me missing most of the match. That whole card was fantastic, though. Oh, Britt Baker, Brit Baker, critically, Brandy Rhodes. We have new PNPW mixed tag champs. The dentist giving Brandy a concussion, knocking her out cold. That's that's the third critical we've seen this show. If I'm not mistaken, three criticals and four matches. All right, more tag team action. The PNPW Junior Heavyweight Tag Belts held by Undisputed Era, Bobby Fish, Kyle O'Reilly. They're going to be taken on. Tracy Williams and let me give him a second. I have Juice come out. Be in the corner. I'm gonna take on. Are they gonna be team Mark Haskins and Tracy Williams, the team of lifeblood against Undisputed Era? Let's go. Drew McIntyre's getting plenty of time to rest up to face Pete Dunne. Honestly, as much as I like Drew, I'm hoping Pete wins just so that we have a successful world championship defense. Fight! It's a little irritating when it's just one shots, you know? Win the belt, lose the belt. It's like when Sasha and Charlotte were feuding over the Raw title. Rolled on his title a couple years ago and just kept playing him. Yeah. Truth be told, I know very little of life, but I've only seen him couple shows. I've seen lots of juice, you know, with New Japan, but the other two guys here, Haskins and Williams, I don't really have any familiarity with them. What the hell is Kyle doing? Did it again.
beat the shit out of each other, guys. What I saw of Tracy Williams in the uh, G1 Supercard was pretty good. Um, I can't speak to Haskins, though, because he was, he was part of that street fight that I didn't care for. That went on way too long. Like that street fight, that six-man street fight that they had at G1 Supercard. Had some interesting spots in it, but it just overall was too long. People are making the uh, characters from the recent story mode in the WWE game. There's Buzz and Cole Quinn and Baron Blade. Someone made Jacob Cass from years ago. Yet, quality indie wrestlers do not exist. Many of them do not exist in the Fire Pro PlayStation 4 community. There's no enough old Matthews. It took forever for Sadie Gibbs to show up. Up his back with those knives, man. interesting is uh, how little has been said about Tenille Dashwood leaving my blood. You know, she debuted with him, and I don't think she ever wrestled with him. I think that was the only time that she was hurt, wasn't it? That was an interesting move. Time limit there, but 
speed arrow wins. Hold on to the belts. I like a good title defense. That's what I was talking about earlier. You know, title changes are fine and all, but I like a good build-up. I like a champ who holds on to their belt for a while. One more tag match. For the heavyweight tag belts, Hiroki Goto, Masato Tanaka, Chaos. They're gonna take on, they're gonna take on another Ring of Honor team. Jay and Mark Briscoe. And while this match gets going, I'll be right back. Sorry about that. I'm just really curious as to what went on with Ring of Honor. There was a time in the early 2000s when they were the independent brand to watch. You know, like they didn't have the the pay-per-views and the exposure that the you know, the, the TNA had, or obviously WWE had. You know, the internet hadn't brought us New Japan on a wide scale. And then suddenly, like, now we're in an era where they're, like, they're doing joint shows with New Japan, and they're totally the weak link. I mean, 
when you think of like the era of Samoa Joe and CM Punk, AJ Styles, Christopher Daniels, you know, they're like, they were killer 15, 20 years ago. Not quite 20 years ago. 15, let's say 15, 16 years ago, man. They still have some talented ass wrestlers. You know, the Briscoes are fun to watch. One, two, three. Briscoes, new tag champs. Just like that. Rookie Goto took a beating there in the corner. Briscoes are the new PNPW heavyweight tag champs. That's fitting. Last time Tanaka had a belt, he held it forever. I think he had over 10 defenses as the hard hardcore champ. Or at 10 defenses. I think 10 might be the record. Alright, up next. I think we're getting out of the tag team action now. Yes. Let's clear the people out here. The PNPW Intercontinental Championship, currently held by Tomohiri Ishii. He is going to be challenged by. As soon as I find him. Well, he's not going to be the faces, so. I always forget I can switch the order and make it more or less alphabetical. Why can't Nick Aldis? I don't know why Nick Aldis is grayed out. That's weird. Samoa Joe is also the uh, IWGP Intercontinental Champion right now, too. So Samoa Joe versus Tomohiro Ishii. We're in the home stretch now. We're in the back half of the of the show. This would be a hell of a match in real life. These two going at it for real. That was a cool move. That was a pretty cool move on Joe's part. What if Joe is that much bigger than Tomohiro Ishii? We shall look and see. 
Oh, nice, uh, dangerous DDT, as they call it. Not enough to put him away, though. Let's see, he's six foot two, 282 pounds. Small Joe is. Six two, two forty two. Five seven, two twenty. Yeah, that's that seems about right then. That's pretty big size difference there. I don't know how small Tomohiro is. Five foot seven, two hundred twenty pounds. He's almost a cruiserweight. I guess he would be a cruiserweight under the old standards. Line, not enough to put Joe away. Throat chop. Oh! Nice transition into a tribal hold. Draw on his head now. Good job, Ishii. I like both of those men a whole lot. They're two of my favorite wrestlers. It's pretty good stuff. I'd say his 85 is probably fair. That wasn't an uh, that wasn't an Okada Omega level match, but it was still pretty damn good. We gotta change modes here for this one. Yes, we do. We gotta back out to the menu. I really wish they had made the the these match types a menu setting in that other screen. Cause it drives me nuts. It almost makes me want to do away with this belt altogether. Almost. I guess Gargano isn't a heel anymore. I need to fix that. Ah, oh, Eric Rowan. There he is. Eric Rowan versus Tajiri for the hardcore belt. Do the bloodstained. And me. Oh, yeah, we should got do these settings too. I'll put five weapons in the ring. And speed 125. Here we go. Hardcore belt. The champion's Tajiri. Eric Rowan's going after it. Ring's a mess. I'll bring up the special map for these matches. If, if I remember. There have been a couple times where I forgot to change things.
wonder how much longer Rowan's gonna be Daniel Bryan's enforcer without uh, the belt on Daniel. Yeah, this was a tag team run. I still find it disappointing that they broke up the Bludgeon Brothers so soon. Like, you know, they they debuted him. They gave him a pretty much a monster push. They put the tag belts on him. And then... Nothing. I should say they re-debuted them since, you know, Harper around and around a while. But I feel like Rowan's been hurt most of his WWE career. He just had an unlucky time with the injuries. Yeah. I love when they pick up the bat and instead of swinging it, they jab at them with the handle. I've never understood that as an attack. I mean, I get why they do it. In real life, because that's, you know, a way that you can quote-unquote hit somebody with a thing and not kill them. But... Same with the hammer. You hit him with the handle end instead of the head. At least when Triple H uses it that way, he uses the, the head end. Give up. Break. Give up. Give up. Very popular move among the bald guys. Dad Bernard uses that same claw, claw slam. Jerry, getting it done. Brainbuster. Rowan just gets back up though. He's faster than you. Oh, it was over there. this podcast recently he said something about hating the power bomb depending on who uses it so there's some guys that could lay you down nice and gentle that hurt that bad and then there's other people that it's just gonna hurt like a motherfucker I'm paraphrasing it's not his words wow did not ex I thought Tajiri was going to lose. He was taking such a beating. I'm going to say, but he hit a Mitch Nogu driver. Up the leg. Alright, what's next? We're getting close to the end of the show here. We've only got four more matches. Alright, back to the tag action. Let me get some women's tag team action going here. Riot Squad, newly won belts. They're going to take on one of my made-up teams. Two women who are currently involved in the Chell Razor Invitational Round Robin Tournament. Actually, all four women are. Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan are in the tournament in, in the AMB brackets. 
and their opponents are also in the tournament in the different brackets, but they're one of my favorite made-up teams here. Ember Moon. And... Isla Dawn. I just like the combination of Moon and Dawn. I had to settle on a costume for her there. Make sure the settings are all what I want them to be. Yep. Let's get into it here. I'll be right back. You enjoy this. I'll be back as soon as possible. I'm not going to lie, last show when Sarah Logan and Liv Morgan defeated Kim and Yim to take the uh, women's tag belt, I was shocked. Because as much as I love Liv Morgan and Sarah Logan as performers, they, uh, they don't win a lot on TV or here. But as I said in the lead up to this, the... Uh, all four of these women are in the Chell Razor Invitational Round Robin Tournament that I've been running. We're about halfway through it. Uh, all, all in the effort to determine a uh, proper number one contender for the Polynetic Pro Wrestling Women's title, currently held by Io Shirai. Um, if Io wins tonight, it'll be her 10th title defense. Basically, that was a very AA take on the uh, on the uh, Death Eye Driver.
Double power bomb. I don't know why that's I love a super kick to a kneeling opponent. That, when that became a spot over the last couple of years. Sarah Logan going to the wrong corner. <laughs> I haven't played more of the fire promoter mode in a while. There's just so many games. Oh. That was the eclipse up there in the corner. With this game's take on it. It's like a diving cutter. That's what I was saying, I haven't really touched the promoter mode in a long time. Just too much stuff to play right now. Like, I haven't played in the division in a couple weeks. I just finished Super Mario Odyssey last night. And by finished, I mean I saw credits roll and I'm on the the, the last level and could go back to all the other levels and find the hidden moons and whatnot. But I have really no desire to spend a lot of time doing that. New women's tag champs. Riot Squad's reign was short-lived. Sadly. Like those girls a lot. As is the norm, it is CPU who holds the belt. I do believe I know what's next. And that is Kazuchika Okada, the Pioneer Pro Wrestling TV champion. He's gonna take on Finn Balor. It will blue Finn, blue Balor. Getting close. The show's wrapping up. It's coming up on the uh, 90 minute mark, so. Seems about right. Fight! I, I just really don't get is the way Balor's been booked recently. You know, they had him look real strong against Brock Lesnar. Did a really good job of making it look like he could beat Brock at Royal Rumble, but didn't. And then he won the Intercontinental title, and then he lost the Intercontinental title, and then he won it again. And then, like, someone pointed out, like, he's traditionally supposed to break the demon out for the big matches, the matches where he needs the the oomph of the you know, the supernatural part of the character 
you know, like he broke it out to defeat Seth Rollins to be the first Universal Champion for one day. Um, you know, in the past, in NXT, he broke it out for big matches. But like, on main roster, he broke it out to beat up Baron Corbin. And he didn't break it out for Brock Lesnar, but he broke it out for Bobby Lashley. Now, granted, I, I get, you know, the the story aspect of it being that, like, you know, they, while it would make more sense to break out the demon for Brock Lesnar, they try to protect the demon aspect of Finn's character. You know, it makes it look, you know, unstoppable that way. So you you give him. You give the demon to Brock, and Brock wins. It kind of sullies the the uh, mystique. for the Rainmaker already. It's like Okada just has, has Finn's number, apparently. Okada's been fairly unbeatable since he took this belt off uh, Jay White, I believe. You can easily shit on this game for the way they slide towards the ropes, but even the WWE games with their photo semi-realistic semi looking graphics um, do that nonsense. Shotgun drop kick. Thomas got a good version of that too. Perfectly timed. Yep. Regular tombstone. Is it time for the Rainmaker? I love how they perfected the camera work of that in New Japan Live Times. Where he spins down, touches the mat, and then throws his arms out, and they've got the perfect camera. Coordination for it. Taking the belt off of Okada. Okada finally drops the TV title. We'll have to go back and look and see how many defenses he had, but he, he held that belt for a while.
Fantastic. Women's belts up next. Io Shirai looking for her 10th defense. She's going to go up against Diver over in the AEW roster. Yes, I do. Kylie Ray. The independent circuits, Bailey, basically. Not to not to be derivative. Or reductive, rather, excuse me. Um, but she just comes across as this lovable, cheery young woman, much of the same way that Bailey is. Uh, speaking of Bailey, I was just reading this morning that she too might be upset with the WWE and looking to leave. Just like the rumors about her former championship tag team partner, Sasha Banks. Yu Shirai has just been an amazing champion. She's tore through so many um, multi-person matches. I guess multi-women matches. Um, most recently, she defeated Candice LeRae and Momo Watanabe in a three-way elimination match. Fisherize our third champion. Um, Give up. She took the belt off Manny Leone. She took it off of Taya Valkyrie. Interestingly enough, both Valkyrie and Malone. Uh, Mandy Leone are uh, heels now. Lose the belt in my video game, become a bad guy in real life. Is it over already? Oh, tombstone into a Texas clover leaf. It's over. Less than seven minutes. Io Shirai puts away Kylie Ray. That's almost the same finish as we, what we just saw. More or less. Like if they'd been in a different corner, it would have we would have been like, hey, we just seen that. But that's the 10th defense for Io Shirai. All right, and finally the main event. PNPW world title, currently held by Pete Dunne. Drew McIntyre's coming for him. Of course, you were watching at the beginning, no doubt. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know that
Drew McIntyre won the eight-man battle royal at the beginning of the show, eliminating Kofi Kingston last for this title shot. As I said earlier, as much as I like Drew McIntyre and would love to have him as my champ, I want to see Pete Dunne win here so we can at least get one successful defense out of one of my world champs. And I love that Pete Dunne, less than a minute and a half into the match, was busted open. I looked away, so it must have been a Drew McIntyre headbutt or something that did it. Dunn loves chairs. Let's not end this on the count out, guys. Really? We're we're gonna we're gonna do a new match. Because Count out victory three. Ah, uh, no. Mm -mm. Well, I got a title defense in. That's not how this show is going to end. So, we're going to do it again. We're going to restart that match. I'm going to the settings. We got the right one here. There we go. Right back into it. Pete Dunn got a successful title defense out of that, but he's not going to get away with a, a count out victory. Or in this case, a count out loss. Fight. Patch Pete back up. He's not bleeding anymore. Drew McIntyre is technically wrestling his third match of the night. Great if you had the option to make it a false count anywhere match. Give up.
Rob Boo and Pete Dunn. I realize he's a he's the good guy here. Better end as we have. For a spine buster, that's the old atomic drop. You'll see the atomic drop utilized too often in there. Kick him in the face. Nice running clothesline. Step up in Zagiri. Jumping in Zagiri. Overhead belly to belly by Drew. Another overhead belly to belly by Drew. So we gotta be careful with those overhead belly to belly. I watched Bobby Lashley knock himself out once in this game. Another one. New champ, Drew McIntyre. PNPW World Champ. After a false finish, we now have another new world champion. See, I could have been content with the with what we had in the last or the first time. P. Dodd loses his belt. Lost it to a fitting person, though. Can't complain about Drew McIntyre being the champ. Before we go, let's take a look at the title defenses. See if that that match counted. I bet it did. We'll start at the bottom. Junior heavyweight title. Taiji Ishimori has got one successful defense. Women's tag again. Belts aren't being defended. They're just kind of ping-ponging around. Except for this belt. They're holding on to it. Got a couple successful defenses here. One here. Now the Briscoes have it. Ishimori's got a couple. Yeah, that... That count out counted. So we at, least, we at least got a defense in before the belt shifted. TV title. Okada had five. Before Fenn took it off of him. Mixed tag. See, Cody and Brandy, they had they had a couple wins. Yeah, see, Tanaka had ten wins. Jabbar had five. Spike had none. He just won the belt and then immediately dropped it. Now Tajiri's got a successful defense. Women's belt, up to ten wins. So if Io Shirai defeats her next opponent, whoever that may be. She will have the record for most successful defenses of any of the championships here in PNPW. That's crazy. Absolutely crazy stuff. Thank you for watching. Um, this has been Pioneer Pro Wrestling Assault on April 13. That great, great title, in my opinion, referencing an excellent movie. Um, 
classic, if you will. And uh, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time. We do some pro wrestling stuff. Maybe later in the weekend we'll do a couple more rounds of the Tell Razor Invitational. Um, I'm going to take a quick break to get something to drink and then dive back into something else if you're watching live. Um, stay tuned, though, throughout the week for content. That's what I'm doing this weekend. I'm making a bunch of content to fill out the week. And uh, hope to see you around. Hope you enjoy the stuff. Make sure you like, follow, subscribe, partner on all the social medias. And I will see you soon with something else. Thanks for watching.